Hi, NPI brought to you by DigiKey, and this week it's from Espresso. Lady Ada, what is the new product introduction of the week this week? Okay, so this week, so normally I pick something from digikey.com slash new, and this wasn't there, but I was personally interested in it, and it's kind of a new product, and we haven't covered a lot of Espresso chips, so I thought I'd show you guys what I've been looking at uh, and studying recently, which is the ESP32C6 new chip series from Espresso. If you know them for the ESP32 and the ESP32 S2 and S3 and C3, well, the C6, it's not actually like that new. It's actually been out for like a couple months. But one thing I've definitely learned about Espresso is it takes about like a year until the software and firmware support for their chips and modules to be like really solid. So if you're at all interested in doing stuff with Matter or Thread or Zigbee, uh, now is the perfect time to pick up the C6 because it's been about a year and so the software is actually starting to firm up very nicely. Um, so first up, the you know, ESP32 C6 is you know part of their Wi-Fi chip family. Um, this one has Wi-Fi 6 support as well as your standard Wi-Fi, you know, everyday 2.4 gigahertz. It also still has Bluetooth low energy. Um, but the new thing that it's added is, first up, instead of Intent Silica processor, it is using a RISC-V processor, which is kind of cool. Um, starting to really see risk five adaptation, I'm sorry, adaptation in, um, you know, companies, especially companies like uh, Espresso that are based in Shanghai. Um, and of course, uh, the new thing is an 802.15.4 uh, radio module, which can do, uh, you know, Zigbee, but also can do just straight packet to packet uh, communication with 802.15.4. Um, and that's kind of interesting to me because, you know, all this also just shares one antenna, which is like really nice. Uh, it's all 2.4 gigahertz, all sharing one antenna. Um, that's the hard part of the engineering and they, they managed to do a really good job with it about it. Um, it also is a super low power processor. Um, it's kind of an update to the C3, which we've used. It definitely has more RAM, which the C3 was a little bit lacking in. So it's kind of nice that they bumped it up to half a me megabyte of SRAM. Uh, you do have an external flash chip, but the module that I was showing earlier, um, that, you know, the one that this is, you can buy the individual chip, but they also come in modules ready to go with QSPY or, um, flash memory inside of them. And so the module that we're talking about has four megabytes of, uh, flash. So far, there's no PS RAM support. Uh, I don't think the chip maybe doesn't even support PS RAM. Um, so it's not meant for like really big IOT, like processing heavy um, applications. It's meant for low power, low cost, light applications, but still want all the peripherals that you would want with an Espresso. Also doesn't have as many pins as like the S2 or S3. It still has a lot, but like just to you know, let you know, definitely has a little bit more than the ESP32, but less than the S2 and the S3. Okay. Um, so like I mentioned, it still has the Wi-Fi support, you know, and love, uh, it's got the Bluetooth low energy it does not have Bluetooth classic, but it does have Zigbee, uh, and 802.15.4, like generic, uh, radio communication. Uh, and this makes it really good for use with matter, which is this new, um, I don't say protocol. It's like a system of connecting IoT devices, especially in home, but also in industry that can use multiple different transports like Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, or 802.15.4 slash Zigbee. Um, but Matter is kind of like the new standard that everyone is going to agree on, hopefully. Um, a lot of companies have signed on to it. So like Google Home and um, Amazon, we'll chat about AWS IoT, and um, the latest products from Apple all support Matter, which is meant to be like the easiest way to con connect home automation devices. So if you are working in the IoT space, you're making smart light bulbs or temperature sensors or whatever, uh, and historically you would have to have... Um, you know, a Zigbee or Bluetooth gateway, you might want to use Matter. Um, as you see in the bottom, the reason I picked this is what's nice about Matter is it can use any transport. So 802.15, 4 plus thread, or Ethernet, or Wi Fi, or Bluetooth. And you can use Bluetooth or Wi Fi for Matter, but um, like I said, a lot of people are interested in, in using Zigbee because it's um, a low power, uh, low overhead transport. If you're interested more about like, you know, the differences and when you might want to use Wi-Fi versus Bluetooth versus Zigbee slash 802.15.4, uh, you know, this guide that we wrote, one of the 3,000 guides, we wrote this many years ago, but it's still very relevant. Um, we have a whole 
section on Zigbee. Um, at the time, it was like often 900 megahertz because we were using like XBs and stuff. Um, but 2.4 gigahertz is really popular. And, you know, there are existing non-matter protocols within Zigbee that you could use with the ESP32C6, like the Zigbee Lightlink, which is like supported by Philips Hue and family. So there are like profiles, I'd call them, with Zigbee. But uh, to be honest, I think like most people are moving towards just using matter. The problem is, like I said, you know, you need a, a gateway. Um, so if you do go this route instead of BLE or Wi-Fi, you know, it's very lightweight. It's very fast to connect. Um, it goes fairly far, but you do need a gateway. So people are going to, you know, and, and part of what I did today was try to figure out, do I have a gateway? It turns out I don't. So you need like um, a Google Home or you need an Echo or Echo Dot or you need um, a HomePod or HomePod Mini. So almost all these devices that people use for home on the voice home automation connectivity, they'll have a gateway built in, but you do need to have one. Turns out my HomePod is too old. Um, okay, so one of the nice things though is, you know, you can pick and choose which protocol you wanna use based on your application or, uh, you know, with your device, it can change to the different protocols. So like if you are selling a device, for example, you may want to use Zigbee because, say, it's the lowest power, um, slowest over, lowest overhead, so longest battery life. But if the home that it's being used in doesn't have a Zigbee router, you could always fall back to Bluetooth or fall back to Wi-Fi. That's what's really nice about the chip supporting all three protocols. Also, of course, because it has Wi-Fi and BLE and Zigbee, it can act as a bridge, like in and of itself. So if you you know, set up your device um, and it acts as like a Zigbee matter device, it can also funnel other Zigbee devices to a Wi-Fi network if it's set up with uh, the SSID and password. Okay, so the next thing is you're like, okay, this sounds great. I want to get in this. This is the new hot thing. Matter. It matters. You'll need to use the ESP SDK, also known as the ESP IDF. I think 5 is, 5.2 is the latest version. I'll say at this moment, there's no Arduino support for uh, programming matter. So you'll have to use the bare SDK. Not that that's complicated. I think you can use platform IO. They also have instructions for every operating system. Um, but this is kind of like, you know, this is a C, C++ path. You're going to have to make sure that you've got drivers, if you've got, um, you know, um, your tool chain set up. Uh, you know, it's a lot of command line work. Another thing you could try, which I did really fast, um, is there is a zero code interface specifically for matter, but it also, I guess, works for other stuff too, that um, especially for setting up, which is kind of neat because I'm also, I'm always into zero code writing. So this INPI also is covering a little bit of this. Um, so they have a lot of different ready to go um, profiles that you can use. And, you know, as I was doing this, I was like, oh, I wanted to use the GPIO plug, just like indicate on or off, whatever. And then realized that they don't have the individual support for the C6 yet in zero code. Um, they do for the C3, so the C6 must be coming soon. However, what you can do is if you're interested, you can go through like their two chip solution, which is called IoT Express Link. And from what I can tell, basically you program the ESP32 C6 as your Wi-Fi slash Bluetooth slash Zigbee matter device, and then you can communicate to it via, actually, so can you go back one, communicate through a, another microcontroller, say your, um, you know, SAMD21 or your uh, Renesas or your Raspberry Pi, whatever. And um, one of the nice things is it also has a direct channel that it can send data um, to AWS IoT backend. So you can use all the AWS like IoT capabilities that they've been developing over the last couple of years, which is kind of neat. Um, of course, you know, you'll have to have AWS account, you'll have to you know pay for the services, um, but it is a way to get your temperature or humidity data or your control straight into a dashboard um, through this partnership that Espressive has with AWS. If you do want to do that, you pick, you know, you can pick the module or the mini or the room. Um, the mini and the room have different pins, select which one. And then what's neat is that they're actually using web serial in a browser. So you use a Chrome, Chromium browser, and then you can configure it. I skipped over the configure page. You can configure which page, which pin you want connected to like the LED or the temperature sensor, whatever. 
And um, then you upload the firmware directly from the console and it even generates the, um, not shown here, the certificate that you can use to uh, do the deployment of the sensor. And then there's a QR code that's tied to the identifier that's programmed into the device because it's like on the fly, it compiled your firmware and configured it and it burned it into your um, ESP32 C6 over the USB port because it's got USB built in. And then you can configure the matter device directly. Like I said, after many hours, turns out I do not actually have a uh, matter gateway, but I'm definitely going to try this next because apparently this like just works out of the box. And then you can use the AT command set um, through the USB port or the secondary serial port. Uh, and you can see here, like at the top in blue is what I send. So you say AT and it says, okay. And then I mistyped some stuff. You can say AT plus matter start and we'll actually like begin the matter protocol and you can set um, characteristics and get characteristics and set alerts and get alerts. You can actually, basically you have like a matter device that you can communicate with over AT commands which means you can use any microcontroller or just your desktop computer if you want to just experiment with it. Um, it's just a very quick way to get started with matter. And this like was amazing. It worked out of the box, which was kind of cool. Um, so you can get dev boards, you can get modules. I suggest starting with the Wuru module uh, because it's castellated pads, it's easy to solder to, nice big onboard antenna. There's also a version with a WFL antenna. I think it's WFL, not UFL. So just watch out for that. Uh, if you want an external antenna and the best part is it's in stock you can buy it right now Hello. that's right um yeah a couple questions uh, since we're yeah this one different um someone know uh what having microcontrollers just adopted five gigahertz um i think pricing i think you know that with with moving to five gigahertz you're gonna have to redo all of your analog front end and honestly i think espresso really nailed down their like wi-fi um, set up. I think somebody once did a decapping and like analyzed the the layout of their um, output stage for the Wi-Fi. And they're like, oh my goodness, this is like an amazingly engineered uh, Wi-Fi analog, you know, the antenna front end. And that part's hard. And once you've kind of figured it out, you sort of kind of don't mess with it. I don't, I think that they will come out with five. And like, I think we covered INMPI. I think Nordic has a, a five gigahertz um wi-fi module so you're going to start seeing it come out but we're going to still see a lot of 2.4 for the next couple right. of years and then with matter do you think we can have adafruit io hook up into it one day i'm definitely interested right like that's one of the things i want to try is you know we have this app that we're working on it's a snap and could it route matter device data to and from adafruit io you need an app to do it um because i wouldn't want you you, know, you have to have some way to do wi-fi or if you know i can figure out we would have the board via wi-fi gateway I, I don't know how to do it yet um but i think there's something there because i think there's gonna be a lot of very low cost matter sensors okay. especially with the sp32 c6 you know being an all-in-one ready to go chip i uh, definitely i see it being a, a popular uh chip to power this new generation of matter sensors for iot and that's on mpi hi on mpi